Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I as always am Riz Grestar and this is another reaction to a death battle, Akuma vs Shao Kahn. So of course make sure to click on the link in the description below to go to the official release first, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, watch that there, then come back here and we'll watch it together. So Akuma from Street Fighter vs Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat. Um, I don't really know a ton about either of these characters, like, I don't really know basically anything about either of these characters, so I can't really say much about them before I actually watch his death battle. Um, I do know that they've appeared in previous death battles. I had the suspicion last time, and it was confirmed for me in the comments. Um, I vaguely remember, like, Akuma has some sort of demon form that seemed pretty powerful, and Shao Kahn, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I know that he's just, like, been alive a long time, has had a lot of experience with Mortal Kombat tournaments. Um, yeah. And so, like, my- I do have a leaning right now, I just don't know how reliable that leaning is. So, as far as I'm aware, like, I would be inclined to say that Mortal Kombat, in general, is a more powerful franchise than Street Fighter is. Again, not to say Street Fighter is not powerful, but to my knowledge, Mortal Kombat is just more so. And, as far as I'm aware, Shao Kahn is, like, the main villain, like, the main antagonist of Mortal Kombat, whereas I- I didn't think Akuma was. Like, I think he's a pretty standout antagonist, but I thought the main one was, like, Bison. Wasn't he? Maybe? Am I wrong? I don't know. And so, like, because in, in the previous death battle that Shao Kahn was in, it was Shao Kahn versus M. Bison, right? So it made more sense, kind of like the main antagonist fighting. Um, and so, you know, I'm inclined to think, well, if the Mortal Kombat universe is more powerful than Street Fighter's universe, just in general, and if, you know, Shao Kahn is like a bigger bad in his universe than Akuma is in his universe, then I would think that Shao Kahn would have the advantage in this death battle when they're like, you know, pitted against each other. So that's, that's really as much as I can say going into it. That's my thought process so far. Um, you know, we'll have to see what the analyses actually like offer us, but yeah. So with that, let's get to watching. So, time for a death battle. Akuma and Shao Kahn, take it away. Akuma, Street Fighter Supreme Master of the Fist. Yes. Shao Kahn, Conqueror of Mortal Kombat. Yes. Today, we'll find out which final boss reigns supreme. He's so, Akuma is a final boss. Sticks, oh. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Okay, okay, okay. So, that kind of gets rid of that line of thinking that I had, if that's the this case. This is the Japanese kanji for heaven. Symbolic of the infinite sky above and the one who stands before it. I see. And the last thing you'll ever see when you meet Akuma. Trained by Master Gotetsu at an early age, Akuma was practically born into the ways of fighting. Okay, you know, as it Goku happens. We're taught the form of Ansatsuka, literally meaning the assassination fist. Heaven, yeah, everybody nice. says martial arts are all about meditation and being zen and all that other boring shit. Well, Ansatsuka <laughs> ain't like the other guys. It combines judo, kenpo, and karate into a unique style that's all about murdering your opponent as fast as possible. As fast as possible. Yeah. Efficiency, I like it. Unfortunately, views on their training greatly differed. Gokin rejected the violent methodology of the Ansatsuke, leaving to develop his own less lethal variant of the form. Because a style called assassination yeah. clearly needed less assassination. That's what I was thinking, yeah. like, Good what do you mean you didn't like the violence? It's assassination the He got so hardcore, he started training to embrace the biggest martial arts secret out there. The Satsui no Hado. Oh. Ever present, ever malicious, this is a manifestation of literal killing intent. Okay. Only Gotetsu had ever met mastered this dark power. So it's like the dark side of the force, but with karate? No, but sure. With the Satsui no Hado, Akuma gained great power at the cost of all compassion. This is the power of monsters. Ah. More like winners! Akuma got so good, he challenged his master and killed him Sith style. With his ex-master's beads around his neck, he declared himself the new master of the Satsui no Hado. Makes Obviously, sense, fair this enough. destroyed his relationship with Goku. The two brothers' destinies, let alone ideologies, were irreparably torn apart. But who cares when Akuma's perfected all the abilities of an overpowered Shoto character and then some? 
He can rain down Go Hadoukens, teleport with the Ashura Senku, and take you for a whirl with the Tatsumaki Zankyukaku. And if Akuma ever wants to take things up a notch, he can summon forth the Kongo Kokoretsuzan. Okay. A geyser of pure energy strong enough to sink an island. All right. With sink it. All I feel like power, that's one of the first Akuma actual like, feats we got. Street fighters out there. Which says a lot when Hakan could loop himself up with enough oil to, get this, launch E Honda into orbit to headbutt a giant meteor into smithereens. Well, <clears throat> what? there's only one way to figure out the TNT of that. <laughs> the oil is get ready to launch. Oh, ah, uh, that's okay. Uh, I've already done the math. It's over 500 trillion tons. Oh, <laughs> can we still do it, though? <sighs> Look at his eyes. I mean... But did you know Akuma's Wait, so Akuma match? I didn't. Some of the folks from I don't understand what that feat was saying, though. Too. And the Macho Mayor Mike Hagar can pile drive people so hard, it makes an explosion you can see from space. Comparing the blast size to Earth's diameter, okay. this explosion must have a yield of over 120 teratons of TNT. That's a lot. That might 120 teratons of TNT. Hey, Akuma's done the same kind of thing. No wonder the only guys who can match him are badasses like Goken. Akuma would challenge Goken again and again. Determined to prove his version of the Ansatsuken was superior. I see. And apparently, he was right, as he oh, defeated good. Goken with his signature technique, the Shun Goku Satsu. AKA the Raging Demon! With this, Akuma gives in to his killing intent. Targeting he didn't a already? Soul and killing their spirit with the weight of their sins. Wow. There's only one known way to survive it emptying your own soul from your body. Oh. Fortunately, Goken knew exactly how to do that. Speaking of souls, this guy Nakali so was he okay? to take Akuma's by devouring him. But not being in Devor, Akuma just blew him up instead. He's so powerful, defeating an opponent takes less effort than smacking a baby. No, not that Akuma would ever do that. What? No, I'm serious. He, he never would because despite the whole <laughs> not that zero ever compassion do that. thing, he has a weird code of honor. It's not compassion at all. To Akuma, fighting is a sort of religion, and respecting the art is more oh. important than anything. He'll okay. spare those with an unfair disadvantage and those whom he deems respects martial arts like him and can improve. In this way, he sort of became an unwanted mentor for Goken student Ryu. Hey, oh, he's not a total killjoy. He did befriend Elena. Well, more like Elena befriended him, but whatever. Right, but that makes sense. But <laughs> disrespect the art of fighting, Akuma will not hesitate to murder you as disrespectfully as possible. Like when he jumped that a-hole and Bison so fast he killed him in one shot. And oh. Bison was quick enough to tag this satellite laser beam. Following the beam speed at this angle, we can determine it was moving well over 5,000 times the speed of sound. But even with all that power, Akuma knew he'd never be at his best until he'd mastered the Satsui no Hado and become Akuma Blanco, er, I mean Shin Akuma. As Shin Akuma, he possesses full control over the dark art, using it to its fullest extent. Okay. Only Gotetsu had ever mastered the Hado like this, because doing it is not just super difficult, but super dangerous. Right. The Satsui no Hado isn't just a form of energy. It is a sentient entity, oh. striving to push those who connect with it to fully commit to their race. I see. For Interesting. When they do they are no longer themselves? They become the Satsui no Hado itself. Yeah, like when it tried to take over Ryu and manifest it as its own evil person, Kage. Akuma oh, truly believes that Hado is Thanks. his best chance at becoming the ultimate world warrior. But he also knows that if he's not careful, he could lose himself to it. And when he does, the Hado will take his body and become the awesome demonic Oni. Oh, he's super powerful. <laughs> Oni's got all sorts of new moves and can easily overpower pretty much any other street fighter. In Japanese folklore, Oni are yokai, or demons, that spawn from the souls of the wicked upon death. Okay. However, in some legends, the most evil of humans can actually transform while still alive. Such as like this. Doji, a drunken monk who gave in to malice, became an Oni, and was so powerful he could not die, even after he was decapitated. Not so different from this big bad blue boy. But yeah. Hey, Akuma hasn't lost himself to the dark side of the Hado yet. The dude split apart mountains, taking a leisurely trip to the bottom of the ocean, and literally leaped into the land above the clouds. He just jumped, and he was there. Cool. For kids standing <laughs> before heaven, this dude straight up flies above it. Akuma's lust for battle will like likely never be sated, but his chosen path has been set. He will either be the world's deadliest man or its bleakest failure. Until then, he will never stop searching for a foe who can challenge the might of his Satsui no Hado. Interesting stuff for sure. Okay. 
Like, obviously, we haven't seen Shao Kahn's portion yet, but this does make me lean more toward Akuma now. The realm of Outworld is a twisted, barren wasteland where only the strong survive. Definitely at the bottom of my list of places to go when I retire. And it's all Reasonable. thanks to the tyrannical ruler, Shao Kahn. Thousands of years ago, Shao Kahn was an advisor to the Dragon King, Onaga. Until Onaga took a permanent nap when Khan poisoned him and claimed the throne all his own. All now, right. That's what I call climbing the political ladder. <laughs> With an army of demonic Tarkatans and four-armed Shokans at his beck and call, Shao Kahn began conquering and merging other realms with Outworld, including the once idyllic paradise of Edenia. After well, which no he more. hooked up with the Denia's queen, Sindel. But his conquest didn't just win him a traitorous milk. The crafty bastard also picked up a ton of awesome powers. Khan is a deceptive leader who isn't afraid to resort to, quite frankly, dickish methods huh. to achieve his Imagine that. Goals. He's basically a wrestling heel in the form of an otherworldly invader. Right down to dressing like a male stripper. <laughs> and despite living on a completely different plane of existence, he's somehow mastered two Chinese martial arts, Daizu and Liu Wei. Both Good for of them prioritize fast and aggressive strikes to overwhelm opponents. But Khan's real bread and butter is his mastery of magic. He can shoot fireballs, create portals, make you his telekinetic yo-yo, bounce projectiles back to sender, and conjure his signature hammer whenever he wants. With his wrath hammer, Khan can crush even the strongest combatants. With a K! To pieces <laughs> with his brutal fatalities. But perhaps his most iconic ability is taking souls. Mm. With just a wave of his hand, he can dine on some fine soul food, courtesy of whatever sap crossed his path. Khan went far with these abilities. And it wasn't long before his conquering eye caught sight of a little planet called Earth Realm. But first, Earthrealm. his forces wow. had to rack up enough wins in. Hit the music, Wiz. Uh, we don't have the licensing rights. Oh, no! Copyright! We don't get sued. Outworld almost had the 10 consecutive wins needed to merge with Earth. But the goody two shoes monk Liu Kang just had to ruin it all. Of but course Khan he did. Just said, uh, screw it, and invaded Earth anyway. The moment Khan kind of set cheap, foot on all right. Earth, he stole the souls of nearly every human being on the planet. Then physically merged Earth Realm and Outworld into one big melting pot of conquest. The exact meaning of merging realms is a little vague, but from Mortal Kombat 3's intro, we do know that it transforms the planet into part of Outworld itself. Okay. But even when he's not literally folding worlds together, Khan is always a threat to behold, far superior to most of the other combatants. He's a cocky asshole, but damn, he sure knows how to get stuff done. He's one-shotted Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade, survived being impaled, broke Kotal Khan's back, and has consistently surpassed the likes of the Thunder God, Raiden. Who, oh, being all thundery, is as fast as lightning. Khan could even hold his own when Raiden held the power of all the Elder Gods. For context, the Elder Goddess Cetrion can grow as large as a planet and fire this hyper-fast laser, large as a planet. which, oh. comparing its speed to the curvature of the Earth, can smite mortals at 2% the speed of light. Huh. Well, you know you're a big shot when actual gods think you're a pain. Look at him go! <laughs> Don't mistake powerful with invincible. Khan's might is only matched by his arrogance. Ah, he typical. really does love to hear himself talk, even when it leaves him totally open. I guess he doesn't consider the consequences of his It's too early for puns. Is that your best? I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> you suck. Uh, moving Aww. on, <laughs> even if it can get the better of him, Khan has proven his arrogance isn't completely unfounded. After ages of conflict, all of the combatants fought in a final clash of good versus evil. Oh. And Khan emerged as the last man standing. Aww. It was there that he defeated Blaze, an all-powerful elemental who threatened every realm in existence. Now when you say all-powerful. <laughs> for the good guys, Raiden had a way to basically go back in time and try to stop Khan from winning in the first place. That's right, Khan was such a big threat, the only way to beat him was a complete do-over. And even with that victory now a non-existent memory, Shao Khan will never relent. Even death has never stopped this conqueror from his ultimate quest to rule everything. I am Khan of Outworld. Oh, I, I wish there'd been more for him. Or I'll soak these well, you know, I like to deal with like numbers and more solid feats just because I'm not great with conceptual stuff. All right, the combatants so are that's set. what I wish we there'd been the more of. Through all possibilities. <clears throat> it's it's time, time for a death, death battle. battle! And pause. Okay, so I don't know right now. Like, I'm just gonna come out. I, I don't know right now. Um, To talk through some things, I remember that like Akuma was apparently faster or as fast you know whatever um faster than 5,000 times the speed of sound 
Um, and based upon what we just got from Shao Kahn with the whole like giant lady laser beam thing, if we're assuming that um, Raiden was actually able to move that fast because apparently Raiden had the combined power of everyone, um, if he was actually moving and attacking that quickly and Shao Kahn was like dodging it, then um, that was saying that Shao Kahn could move at 2% the speed of light. I don't know how those numbers compare. 2% the speed of light and 5,000 times the speed of sound? I just don't know. Um, I'm inclined to say light just because light is like so heckin' fast, y'all. But 2% is also really small. <laughs> so, and 5,000 times is not bad. But I'm leaning toward I'm just, like Shao Kahn being faster in that regard. Um, they, they had mentions of like Akuma being able to... Like basically I was thinking about... No, it wasn't like planet busting. It wasn't planet busting, right? Did he have planet busting stuff? I don't remember him having planet busting stuff. It was, uh, the biggest I remember is like 120 teratons of TNT, which is, again, not nothing. But, um, that was, I think that one was for like an explosion that could be seen from space. And so if it could be seen from space, that means that it's not enough to bust Earth, so it's not planet busting. You know? So, like, I feel like the biggest things in Akuma's favor, if I'm understanding those, like, more n number, like, technical feats correctly, which I might not be at all, you know? I feel like Akuma's, the, the biggest thing he has going for him is his stuff dealing with, like, souls, like, how he can, he has that one ability that crushes the opponent under the weight of all their sins, and the only way to, like, ignore it is to, like, remove your soul from your body. Now... I am not sure on two things with this, like with how Sha Shao Kahn would deal with it. One, he's consuming a bunch of souls. I don't know if that just means like he eats them and enjoys it, like cool, I ate a soul today, it was really nice. Or if it means like he now has two souls, then three souls and four, whatever, in his body, right? I don't know. And then on top of that, let's say that he does have multiple souls in his body now. Does Akuma's thing become more powerful? because now it's weighing the weight of all of those soul sins? Or <laughs> does Shao Kahn not need to remove his body because he can substitute his own soul for one of those and like they're gonna be the one that like dies instead of his? I really don't know how that works and that would make a huge difference because either it does nothing to Shao Kahn or Akuma would have to do it like again and again and again and again until all of the souls are done and it's just down to Shao Kahn's soul and then he destroys it, but that would just be too much, I think. Or <laughs> Akuma's ability is way more powerful <laughs> because of all of the souls and all of their cumulative sins. You know what I mean? So that's a lot. Like I, And then I think Shao Kahn's biggest thing that he has going for him is it seems like the Raiden fight, just combining all of those Elder Gods, they really only mentioned, I think, like, the one, like, the, the planet lady. But again, like, if we're talking, if we're saying that Raiden was moving, like, as quickly as she, as, like, her attack was moving, you know? Um, but, like, in his smaller, more nimble form, so I would imagine he could himself physically move faster than the attack itself was moving. Um, and if he actually had that same kind of power, like, I guess here's another thing. She was the size of a planet, right? But does that mean you would need to be a planet buster at minimum in order to beat her? Does being the size of a planet mean you also have at minimum the durability of said planet? Like, it wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't think, in the sense of like, you know, if I have a cube made of, made of titanium and then the same size cube made of cardboard, like they're the same size, but obviously like I could crush one and the other would break my hand. So, so I don't know actually how that really works out. Well, shoot. Um, I, I, another, another good thing that Shao Kahn is going for him is that final battle of like good versus evil where he came out on top went up against the all-powerful fire thing blaze or whatever his name was, right? Um, because that's a lot of people to go up against, but it wasn't like just him against that army. It was him and who knows how many else, or how many other like villains against who knows how many good guys. For all I know, Shao Kahn like stayed back and just commanded the force, right? But not not like use the force, you know, the army. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm torn on so many different things. I really, I really don't know with this one. Um, okay, so just because I kind of have to make a decision, right? This can't go on for forever. I'm going to say that Shao Kahn is going to win. Um, because of like that army feat at the end, 
because of the uh, Raiden Elder God feat. Um, he does have magic too, which is fairly versatile. And the potential for the souls to render Akuma special ability kind of useless, but it also could completely backfire and make Shao Kahn super incredibly vulnerable to it. On top of that, Shao Kahn has like tons of experience, you know, over 10,000 years. Um, his magic was able to like fold worlds together, like combining realms. And I would normally say that that's, just, that's a separate thing. That's what that specific magic can do. But it's very possible that Death Battle will be like, this is the amount of force it would take to fold realms together just because they they do that sometimes but like if you're playing dungeons and dragons and you use and hall it increases your carry capacity but doesn't increase your actual strength because it's magic and magic can work in weird ways that has strange limitations you know and so i would think that that magic was specifically just like oh this magic holds realms together and it doesn't mean like he can output that amount of force or whatever yeah i don't know um, another, I will say another thing that's giving me big pause is the fact that, you know, Shao Kahn went up against Bison. I don't remember who won there, right, in that fight, but apparently Akuma destroyed Bison in an instant. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I'm gonna say Shao Kahn's gonna win this one. We'll find out. We'll find out. And play. <laughs> Die 1000 death! Well, there's that. There's heaven for you, presumably. You Hello. Dare interrupt my tournament. Another fool seeking my throne. I only seek your life. Reasonable. Shao Kahn, please win. <laughs> I was so torn. But now that I've decided on you, like, come on. Do it for me. That's a neat trick. Ow, right in the gut. You will die. Death is beneath me. Stop her! I like him just one-handed that giant hammer. <laughs> or one-handing. Is that your best? No. Pathetic. Ow, right? Well, that's the Shinakuma, right? Or Akuma Blanco. Blanco? Blanco? Ow! He needs that! That's his skull! Your soul is mine. No! I feel like the hammer is really not your best thing here, but... Hey, Lexus, I'm gonna let him keep going with it. I didn't even know we could summon other weapons. <laughs> Forgot about that much, apparently. Ow, right in the face! Oh! I mean, he survived being impaled before, but that looked pretty nasty. Moment of truth. Feel the wrath of Shao Kahn. <gasps> oh, he just got Mjolnir'd. Oh, victory! Thank you, Shao Kahn. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call a fatality! With the power of the Satsui no Hado, Akuma was a unique challenge for Shao Kahn. Yeah, like how he resisted Nikali suggests Kahn couldn't have just yanked his soul away so easy. Right. And Akuma's level of power Which I wasn't even considering because, yes. 
Akuma's biggest hits were way stronger than you'd think, blasting apart meteors and making explosions seen from space. But Khan survived blasts from beings even more powerful than that. Thank like goodness. the Elder Gods, who can grow to the size of planets. And remember Blaze? I do. He could destroy all the realms and even did in one of his endings. Oh, you know, I did forget Blaze's about that. story ending isn't canon to the Mortal Kombat universe in and of itself, it is still an example of what could happen in canon. Mm. And Khan whooped that red hot ass. While we do not have an exact time frame for Blaze's destruction, of the realms, destroying Earthrealm alone would require at least overcoming Earth's gravitational binding energy. Of course. About 47.8 Zeta, Zeta not TNT. Terra. Over 300 million times the power of the Terratone explosion from Akuma's lineup. Right. And keep in mind, when Khan merges realms, he is literally morphing an entire planet into Outworld itself. This means it makes Look at that, they use this feat. Blaze because he right? already commands a similar level of power. But I know what you're thinking. What about the And I'm not saying that like that, that can't awesome. be a thing. I'm just saying magic doesn't necessitate that kind of like force equivalent. Time for it to totally murder his soul. There was always a possibility that Akuma would get a lucky hit in with the Shongoku Satsu. However, given Khan can keep up with the likes of Elder Gods and their space lasers, he could certainly keep pace with Akuma. And sure, Khan's an arrogant son of a bitch, but he knows when to get serious. If his arrogance was that big of an issue, he wouldn't have conquered so many realms. Both Akuma Reasonable. and Khan were among the best of the best in their respective worlds, but this match ultimately came down to who would land their killing blow first. Shao Kahn's overwhelming power, mystical abilities, and treacherous strategies were enough to claim this victory. Outworld's Emperor was the only one who could surpass Oni? Akuma. Nice. The winner is Shao Kahn. Claps for Shao Kahn. Cool. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. You're welcome. We'll be jumping into the next matchup next week. But you can always get more Death Battle right now by clicking one of those boxes right over there. Just go to roosterteeth.com and below. check out that. Or next time on Death Battle. Or go to the YouTube channel. It's Korra! Korra! And Storm! Korra and Storm! Korra versus Storm. That'll be cool. Like, I have to imagine that Storm will win. I mean, like, as cool as Korra is, Storm is, like... Isn't she an Omega class mutant, right? And that's like super duper powerful. Korra can control all the elements, sure, but the last that we saw her in the in the show, at least, she wasn't that amazing. She was not that amazing. She was losing to like a lot of people that I feel like she shouldn't have. Anyway, I think Storm is going to win the next one. But as for this one, I was right, yay me. So <laughs> I'm glad that I was able to figure out all of that Akuma Shao Kahn stuff. Like, I mean, I say that, I know that a lot of people disagree because apparently people didn't really like this death battle. I didn't really see anything that was wrong with it. I thought that the fight looked good. Um, you know, the analyses for the most part I appreciated. You know, it was definitely lacking in the areas that I tend to desire as far as like, again, those solid feats, the numbers, things like that. Um, but it was close enough, or maybe I just got lucky enough, I don't know, that I was able to pull what I needed to to determine the victor from it. Um, I, I, uh, I wish they... Maybe they did in the conclusion. They kind of talked about, like, if Akuma, maybe he could have landed a lucky hit with da-da-da. Would that have been, like, the soul-crushing thing? Is that... So are they saying that Shao Kahn would have been just as affected, if not more, by that than, like, most people? Okay. But at least as far as, like, the, the speed of, like, the, the planet lady, you know, or her beam, rather, and him dodging that... Um, and I even mentioned again, like, Shao Kahn's ability to fold the realms together, <laughs> and they did bring that up in the conclusion. I did completely forget about Blaze destroying the- all of the realms. Um, I did know that he fought Blaze, and I knew that that was, like, a really big thing, but I couldn't have told you for the life of me how at all that was a big thing. Like, <laughs> you know, explicit examples, just uh, like, oh, you know, good versus evil, and then he fought that guy. <laughs> so, they called him all-powerful, that was all I really remembered from it. Um, but, yeah, no, just in general, like, I'm, I'm pleased with the outcome. It makes sense to me, uh, because, you know, again, like, I shared, like, the conclusion shared stuff that I had shared during my prediction as far as why I thought Shao Kahn, um, would win. Uh, was I, was it definitely close, like, in my mind? Yes, as far as, like, I wasn't sure how to read the two and their feats. Um, but, yeah, just glad I kind of went with the 50-50 I was leaning toward, right? I mean, I didn't think it was that close, but you know what I mean. Um, like I said, I thought the animation was enjoyable, um, and this is me, like, this tone I have right now is more because, again, in the comments of the last death battle, people were like, oh, I'm gonna skip this next one, it was so bad. I don't know what they're talking about. 
Uh, maybe it's because they, like the people who said that, have specific Street Fighter knowledge or specific Mortal Kombat knowledge. Um, and so, like, or experience, not just knowledge, but like, you know, memories with said games or whatever. Um, and this portrayed one or both of them in like a weird way or something. I don't know. Just because, yeah, it didn't, this fight did not seem bad at all to me. Is it like my favorite? No, but I, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> I thought it looked good. Like, there were a couple moments where I thought some of the character movements seemed a little bit stiff, but not in the same way of, like, uh, you know, a couple previous ones that I actually won't name right this moment because I'm just deciding not to. But you probably know what I'm referring to because I called them stiff in those episodes. But, you know, I kind of attributed that more to just, like, their particular fighting styles or how those moves are portrayed in their respective games. That's just kind of how it seemed to me. Like, I, I appreciated the story setup that they had going into the animation, like, into the fight itself, you know? Um, I appreciated, again, how they played with the space and how they showed off the different characters' abilities and whatnot. It just seemed to flow nicely to me. Um, overall, it seemed like a nice, um, organic buildup. And, uh, you know, just the delivery in general seemed good. I liked the back and forth nature between who seemed to be on top at the time. And then, you know, you reach the point where like Akuma impales Shao Kahn. And you're like, ah, but the analysis is that he survived that before, <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, I was pleased with this death battle. I, I agree with the conclusion and I enjoyed the fight itself. So... That's really all I have to say about this one, I guess. So let me know what you all thought about this death battle in the comments below. Whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, what you thought about this or that, etc. So on and so forth, that next time we will be watching Korra versus Storm, where I imagine that Storm will win. Even if Korra does have more versatility in terms of the elements, Storm has way more in terms of experience. And just like, she's super powerful with what she could do. Right? Right? I don't even read the comics. But isn't Storm an Omega class mutant, which is like the top tier? Am I wrong? Anyway, <laughs> with that, we're calling it here. So have a good one, everybody.